And now, Philosophy for Kids with Peter Singer. Mr. Singer, it's a pleasure to have you here today. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, hi, my name is uh, Peter Singer. Uh, I'm not actually a singer, I'm actually a philosopher. A uh, philosopher is someone who basically generates opinions after they've studied life and what people do. And uh, I was born on July 6, 1946 in Melbourne, Australia, which if you don't know is very far away from the United States. Before I was born, my parents used to live in Vienna, Austria. But when the evil Nazis from Germany came to take over Austria in 1938, they decided to move far, far away because they were Jewish and they knew that the Nazis would be mean to them. They moved to Melbourne, where I was later born. Sadly, I never got to meet my grandparents because they were captured by the Nazis and were never heard from again. When I was, young, when I was younger, I attended a lot of good schools and I always did really well. I first went to Press Hill and Scotts College, which are both located in Melbourne. After finishing at those schools, I went on to the University of Melbourne to learn about law, history, and philosophy, and I got my bachelor's degree from there in 1967. I was then awarded a scholarship to study at the University of Oxford, where I received a Bachelor of Philosophy in 1971 with my idea on civil disobedience. I also have found the time to write many books in my lifetime, and I've been called usually one of the most popular writers in philosophy. One of my best works was written in 1975, entitled Animal Liberation. The book talks about animal rights and how the interests of animals should always be considered because they can feel suffering just like we all do. Along with writing many books, I also went on to become a teacher at a lot of really great schools. I spent two years as a lecturer at University College Oxford, which is a smaller branch of the University of Oxford. I then went to teach at NYU for a little over a year. In 1977, I decided to move back to Melbourne, where I would spend the rest of my career until I ended up getting a job at Princeton University, which is in New Jersey, in 1999. I still work at Princeton today, but in 2011, I decided to join a small group of professors working at the New College of the Humanities, which is a private college in London, along, along with my job at Princeton. I've achieved so much in my life for being very smart and always knowing that I have to work hard. Some of my greatest achievements include being inducted into the Animal Rights Hall of Fame in 2000, mostly for my work with, anim with the book Animal Liberation, and also being voted one of Australia's 10 most influential public intellectuals in 2006. Now, Mr. Singer, what is your school of philosophy? My main focus is in the school of axiology. Axiology breaks up into two parts, aesthetics and ethics. I center on ethics. Ethics has to do with the, the ideas involving what is right or wrong, and how humans do right or wrong things. Mr. Singer, you wrote a book called Practical Ethics. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your book? Okay. In my book, pra Practical Ethics, I talk about the principle of equal consideration of interests. This goes in-depth about why people have different interests and what causes people's interests to vary. An example of this principle is that a starving person would have much more of an interest in food than a person that is only slightly hungry. So, Mr. Singer, tell us what your worldviews are. Well, my worldviews consist of poverty, evolution, vegetarianism, and animal rights. World poverty is, is the spread of wealth or money throughout the world. In the world, there are some people who have a lot of money, but there are also a lot of people who don't have a lot of money. I believe that people who have a lot of money are supposed to give some of their money to the people who are poor, so then everyone is happy. Everyone will be happy when they can live comfortably. For example, if you live in a nice house and your neighbor lives in a cardboard box, you could help donate them some money so they can live in a, nicer, in a nicer home or let them stay in your house. 
I give about 25% of my money a year to charities. Charities are groups of people who help give out, give out help in food and money to the poor so they can live good lives. I also believe that people are morally capable of doing good. For example, if a man, there's a man who once had a very expensive car. He parked his car next to a railroad station and he saw that there was a runaway train coming. The train was going to hit somebody and that person was going to get hurt very badly. He could have chosen to sacrifice or give up his car so that the other person was safe. Instead, he was selfish and chose only and chose to save his car. This is, this shows how I believe that people can do good, but they don't always do good. Mr. Singer, why don't you explain your views on abortion? I believe that it is wrong for a woman to have an abortion. This means that when a mommy is about to have a baby, sometimes mommy mommies don't want to have a baby and the doctor helps the mommy to get rid of the baby from inside the mommy's tummy. These three statements sum up my views on abortion. It is wrong to kill an innocent human being. A human fetus is an innocent human being. Therefore, it is wrong to kill a human fetus. Mr. Singer, why don't you tell us a little bit about world poverty? One of my best known essays is called Famine, Affluence, and Poverty. In this essay, I talk about how some people live in great abundance with expensive cars and houses, and others live without food or shelter. I think that this is wrong, and anyone who has the ability to help the poor should give part of their income to help poverty relief. Uh, all right, Mr. Singer. Why don't you just uh, summarize the rest of your world views for us? I believe in evolution. Evolution is how people change over a really, really long time. I say that based on how people's brains work, that people are selfish and we only want to be good to ourselves. I say that even though we always try to be selfish, that it doesn't mean that we can't be good. I also believe that people have changed over time to be able to do good things. Another one of my worldviews is vegetarianism and animal rights. Vegetarianism is when you only eat vegetables and no animals. I don't like eating animals because animals that we eat are often treated badly and I believe in animal rights. As an atheist, I don't believe in God, so I also believe that animals and people all have equal rights. I believe that it is okay for people to be friendly towards the animals and that they can play and have fun together. Those are my thoughts. And now it's time for our word of the day, civil disobedience. Civil disobedience is when you choose not to follow certain rules because you don't agree with them. You don't follow them in a way that is not violent and doesn't hurt anybody. Thanks for, for the show today, everybody. Have a great week.